Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Upgrades. I'm Jeremy Knoll. And I'm John Suarez. And today, we're going to be talking about the Coven Counters deck from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. And we're going to do things a little bit differently today than we've done in the past. We're actually going to be just doing a top five cards under $5 to put in the deck, and we're going to be doing a countdown style. So we're going to have an honorable mention and our top five throw it out there. So uh, for the Coven Counters deck, this one is headed up by Lenore Autumn Sovereign. This is a green-white deck that is really all about the varying powers of your creatures. It's kind of a human's deck, and it likes plus one, plus one counters. Superpowers or yes. individual <laughs> power and toughness? Individual power and toughness. It, Thank you, Stephen it. Green. Just wanted to be clear. For, for making sure everyone was clear on that aspect of it. So headed right in, our first card, our honorable mention is Felidar Retreat. This is a card that I absolutely love. As soon as I saw this, I love Landfall. This one is great in this deck because not only can it get you a creature token, that has two power, so it's going to have a pretty, you know, standard power, but different from what your commander it is, different from probably what a lot of your, like, humans are at 1-1, one yep. one. or it can give you a plus one, plus one counter on all your creatures and give, give them Vigilance in the line of turn. Yeah, Wizards has done a really good job of printing four mana white enchantments that are very commander playable recently. So, you know, I think this card is, is very good for what we're trying to do. Yeah, for sure. So, number five. Uh, I'll jump right in. Number five, we are looking at Increasing Devotion. Uh, three colors, two white, sorcery, creates five one one human white tokens. And then if you happen to have spelled, played it from your graveyard, because it has flashback, it creates ten tokens instead, and that flashback cost is nine, seven white, white. Yeah. So as we said, it is a sort of a human's deck as well as it, it has a fair amount of non-humans in the deck, but there's a good like human sub theme in the deck. And one of the things that you really want this card for is if you're going to be playing your off face commander, which is Kyler, Sigardian Emissary, which gets counters for each whenever human comes into play. It doesn't say human, non token human. Correct. And it also pumps up all your other humans. So, really great to be able to just, you know, slam five humans into play and just pump them all up really quickly and have an alpha strike the next turn if you want. So, yep. moving on to number four, this is actually a relatively new card and I can see how it might have flown under some people's radar, and that is Arcus Acolyte. It is from Modern Horizons 2. It's an uncommon. It's a green and a white human cleric archer 2-2 two, two, reach lifelink outlast for a green white hybrid and it gives each other creature you control without a plus one plus one counter on it outlast for a green white hybrid. So just really good for the overall theme of the deck trying to put plus one plus one counters on it. If you need to be able to you know put those extra plus one plus one counters on you know random humans you have to be able to get to that coven ability mm -hmm. of three separate powers very useful for that. Yeah, and you actually have two of the other outcast creatures in the deck. You have mm -hmm. Ops and Falconer for fl for first uh, flying, and then you have the one for first strike as well. Yeah. And so it, you're going to get that bonus if you happen to see those during it as well. Very, very easy. So number three, one of my favorite cards and a card I've played a ton in non-commander magic uh, is Thalia's Lieutenant. 1-1 one, one for two, one on the white. It's a human soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each other human you control. It doesn't matter if it's a token or not. And then whenever another human comes into the battlefield under your control, Thalia's Lieutenant gets a plus one, plus one counter. Yeah. So this card, if you happen to have Lenore out, is going to basically get you to your three powers almost immediately. Because it's going to come in as a one, one. It's going to pump up another creature, another plus one, plus one counter. Uh, and you're pretty much going to be basically at your point. Yeah. Yeah. And being a two mana can come in, you know, uh, give another creature that mm -hmm. plus one, plus one counter. You can pump it up immediately. Like, you know, it, it, it's it's really, really good. It's good early. It's good late. Yeah, it's going to be very useful in this deck. Moving on to number two. This is probably the most powerful card not on the list. Uh, and that's saying something about our number one, which is you know kind of the most obvious. So this one's probably the most powerful, just raw power level. And that is Cathar's Crusade. This one has had a considerable number of reprints in the last it few has. years. It was pretty expensive up until just a few years ago when it started getting reprinted a couple of times. So it's an enchantment, five mana, three white, white. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So that triggers a bunch of times if you're making tokens, multiple tokens in a turn. Yep. It triggers whenever you're playing one of these smaller creatures, these two mana creatures, it triggers when the, you know, like your Felidar Retreat. It just... Every time a creature comes in, going to trigger over and over and over again, and it's going to make your your army formidable. Yep. Very formidable. If you're playing Thalia's Lieutenant at number three, yeah. then obviously Cathar's Crusade is another level, and we will do it to every creature, regardless of the humans. So, yep. big fan. All right, and our number one, uh, 
not maybe the most powerful card, but definitely the most obvious and one we've talked about uh, in Commander Versus before. That's Gavany Township. Don't understand how this card didn't make the pre-constructed deck. We talked uh, a little bit about that when we actually revealed the deck. We were very confused why this wasn't in there. It's a $2 card. That's it. And it's great. Just and yeah. put counters on creatures. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand. I get that it was in Commander 2020, so maybe they didn't want to go back-to-back -back years. Yeah. But... It's just so obvious. Yeah. This is easily the best land to throw right into your deck for two bucks. Yep. It's very obvious, very easy, puts counters on all your creatures, costs four mana plus tapping the land. You know, it, it's a pretty obvious one. So let us know what cards you would put into the Coven Counters deck in the comments below. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. For John Suarez, I'm Jeremy Knoll. See you next time.